Hey, Dr. Emily McKnight here, and I am announcing that I am no longer a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, but more importantly, I want to share with you just my transparent experience being involved in this organization and how it impacted my life, my marriage, and my family. Who I consider this video for is anybody who is interested in joining any D9 organization. This is not just AKA, this is uh, pertinent to all the Divine Nine sororities and fraternities, anybody who is currently in one, anyone who is married to a person who is in <laughs> one of these D9 organizations, anyone who has children either interested or currently interested, I'm sorry, interested or currently in one of these organizations. And then last but not least, anyone who you know and love that falls in that category above that you are concerned about their welfare, their well-being, and the lives of their children. This is who this is for, and that includes romantic relationships. I'm going to be transparent. I'm not going to hold back, um, and I am going to obey this call. This is something that God has wanted me to do, and he wants me to come from a legacy perspective specifically. So this is from a wife, and this is from a mother's perspective. Now, let me start with my own personal journey. I was 37 years old when I came through a graduate chapter. Okay, I was pregnant with my fourth child. So that might be um, new. I was not 19 years old, didn't know what I was doing. No, I was grown, grown. Okay, I knew what I was doing. I was in a season of my life where I was going after everything that I felt that the devil stole from me years ago. I was going for it all. Okay, I was recently married. Um, after being a single mom to two daughters for several years, I married my high school and college sweetheart, um, who I've always loved. God brought him back together, uh, brought us back together 13 years later. I mean, I was going for all the things, okay? Starting a graduate program, I was doing the things. A little backstory to me and my husband's um, love story. We met in high school, but then dated long distance college. And our relationship ended because he pledged Kappa at the side. That's my perception. And it was really because he notified me and told me like, hey, ever since I pledged, like I am not able to be faithful to you. Basically, he was saying like this, this yard is hot, right? Um, I think we saw each other one time after that. And I was like, no, nah, you know, we can do this. He was like, mm -mm, I can't, I cannot. And I always respected the man for being honest with me right? But just, it wasn't until after all of this was like, wow, that really broke us up. But um, what brought us to, back together was God, okay? So we went our separate ways and, you know, we were both kind of brought back together when we were both in um, a junction in our lives where we were at God's feet. We were, you know, in the word, we were trying to date, you know, God's way. We were both abstaining and just God worked on us individually and then brought us back together. So when God brought us back together, he was not Mr. Kappa on the yard anymore. He was a man after God's own heart. And I could tell the difference. Okay. So I wanted to say that now we are moving towards marriage. And he didn't talk about Kappa as much, but but me being a professional woman and having all these, you know, just kind of connections, they would hear about him. And I'm like, yeah, well, he is a Kappa. That was like, oh, well, let's connect him to the noops in LA, right? Or the noobs at church, right? That was just a natural thing for him to get community. And so that's what we did. And so around the time that we got married and really early on in our marriage, that was our friend circle. It was Kappas and most of these men were married to AKAs. Now this in and of itself re-sparked an interest in AKA. I was interested in it at one point as an undergraduate um, but as soon as I transferred to that university, the, that very same semester, that line got kicked off. That whole graduate chapter got suspended indefinitely for hazing. And so I was like, dang, you know, I just never was able to do it. But, you know, now here in our early 30s or whatnot, and I'm hearing about it and they're like, it's not like that. You can do graduate chapter. I was interested. Okay. Now, it's funny because as his friends would be talking to me, if my husband overheard them talking, he would always come in like, nah, man, we straight, we good, no, we good over here. And I'm like, why are you being a hater, <laughs> you know? And now that I think about it, I feel like my husband was discerning something. He just wasn't able to articulate it. 
but it don't matter what he was talking about. I was determined and my mind was made up. I wanted it, okay? And so I remember talking to one of my Kappa, one of his Kappa friend's wives. She was an AKA and she was putting me on on how to become a member, right? And I remember her contacting me, was like, hey, we got something Friday, like you need to come. You know, here's an event that you can come to. Well, that Friday was my actual 36th birthday. And I was like, oh, I always, you know, celebrate my birthday with my daughter and I'm kind of recently married and I got this new son, you know, like we usually do things together. But in that moment, I decided like, look, we gonna celebrate over the weekend. But tonight I'm going to this interest meeting or this event or whatever. So anyway, the process, I say all that to say the process just started, this drive to become an AKA started even as I was going to events, right? Um, that process flopped. She was just like, hey, we can't do it. It was no explanation. She didn't tell me why. It was still a lot of secrecy, but she was just like, hey, this ain't gonna work out. We're gonna have to try another time. Then let's say the following year, I started, um, I moved to the Midwest to start my doctorate program. And as soon as I got there, my first friend was an AKA. And I remember asking her like, oh, what is it about? Whatever. She was like, wait a minute, what, you interested? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. She was like, oh, I got you. No worries. My assumption is this is a window that God is opening for me. And that would be my first mistake with this organization. I did not ask God. Everything else in my life the season prior, it was me and God in partnership, in tandem. How I got married, I follow him to the T. It just so happened that I married this guy, right? He told me to quit a six-figure job soon after that to go back to school. We obeyed, right? Write a book, start a relationship coaching business, like begin influencing things. God was leading me and I consulted with him everything over and over and over again. But this I did not ask him a nothing, okay? You know, that Proverbs that says you're not supposed to lean on your own understanding. I lean on my own understanding. I figured that, I just remembered, D9s are based on Christian principles. And how could they not be? Because guess what? My pastor at the time was Greek. Women at my, my church who I serve with, Greek. Now my husband, who is the priest of my home, Greek, Okay. So clearly this has to be a good thing, right? So I thought. So my initiation process began. And again, this resilient determination kicked in. Um, I had to go to these events. It was the middle of the winter. And I would drive 45 minutes in the rain, sleet, snow. Mind you, I'm pregnant with my fourth child at the time. I'm hydroplaning on these roads, but I'm like, I got to get to these events. Um, and I started the process and honestly, this grad level process, it wasn't bad. Yes, it was a lot of information I had to learn. Yes, I saw some cattiness, but, and then even as the initial process started, you know, some things were weird, like the stuff that you see on the movies. Okay. But I would call my husband like, Hey, you know, that was kind of weird or whatever. And he was like, yeah, you know, whatever, or could you believe this girl said that? And he was like, hey, this is what you're trying to do. It was more so like I had it worse, okay? Just this is what you want, get through it, all right? So that's what I did. Um, On my initiation day, there was in fact a ritual, right? I know some of you have heard of these things, but it's true, okay? You're not privy of this information beforehand. You're told like, look, all these other sessions you wear black, this day, we wear white. We gonna have a little ceremony, a little something, something going on, and we gonna have brunch and with your family, okay? That is what you think. But when you go in, it's a whole situation, okay? I recall a whole altar-like setup, like a table, with objects on it and candles lit and all this different stuff, right? And this represents this and this represents that, right? I rem remember repeating various lines and taking oaths and repeat after me, say this, repeat after me, very extensive, okay? And I'm gonna link the ritual um, because that is available. I signed my name in a book, okay? And I kneeled down on a pillow and bowed. I remember that because somebody had to help me up because I was pregnant. Now, when I'm reading my Bible and 
I'm thinking about this, I'm like, all of this goes against the will of God. But at the moment, I promise you, nothing was triggering. It was just more so like, okay, didn't know we were doing all of this stuff, but you're rolling with it, okay? Um, every time I read Matthew 5, 33 through 37, it just reminds me of that day. I'm going to read it to you. Again, you have heard that it was said to be, to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Here's the thing. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. This is so loud to me because now in hindsight 2020, I'm thinking like, how come God doesn't want us to kneel at these altars and take these oaths? What is our God protecting us from? And who did we just make these vows and this covenant, basically? Who did we make this to? All right. We'll talk about it. But my immediate experience in the first few months, just in the practical, I want to share with you. My very first chapter meeting. Hey, welcome to Odysseus. Yay. Now it's order of business. My first thought was like, where is the sisterhood that y'all talked about? That meeting, I'll never forget. They were discussing a fist fight that happened between undergraduates and a graduate member. A fist fight. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Who fighting? In AKA, right? I mean, is this not the sisterhood and all this different stuff? Pretty girls. I'm like, what? Fighting, right? Um, even after that, the months to come, I was met with immediate busyness. When I tell you, they was like, you come in and you serve. You serve on this committee. You get a committee. You can head a committee. Like it was all the things that you can do to serve in that organization. And I became immediately busy. This is what a fresh, brand new baby. Not one time was it said like, oh, I know that you live far or that you just have this new baby. None of that. It was just kind of like, all right, so you knew, get to work, right? Even people used to see things in me where they would groom me to say, you know, I see that you you know, may want to be an officer. I'm going to connect you with this person and that person. She's higher up in the ranks or just what have you. And so they saw something in me and they were grooming it. All right. And I was just falling suit. Like I'm just making up for lost time. And lastly, I was proud to be an AKA. You couldn't tell me nothing. All right. I remember at my book launch, I had my new pins on or just whatever, you know, that I got in my initiation I'm doing speaking engagements. I will always throw in a little bit something about my org. I'm sitting up here talking about dating and relationships. You will hear something about AKA. Even on social media and influencing, like you can even come to my page without some type of indication, little pink and green heart, Christian relationship coach, whatever. Like you knew that I was an AKA. But that's not when this thing got worse. It got worse when I had this desire for legacy. My daughter approached graduation, my oldest daughter, and it was imperative that she move to the Midwest and come and join me in the chapter. I made sure that I was on the membership committee. Um, I made sure that we had, you know, a graduate chapter at that specific time of window when I tell you about the cattiness before, I became the cat. Like, I became that woman that they were complaining about. Like, I don't even want to work on her. That's how bad I was serious or how serious I was about getting my daughter to come through. Even when she did move, I was forcing her to go to these events. She didn't really see the value again. Like, we're from L.A., um, and we didn't have any Greeks in our family at all. I was the first one. And so she just really didn't see what all the hype was about. But she went and she followed through and she got voted in. Even before that, let me back up a little bit. Um, being on this membership committee, I got a tip in to say that her transcripts weren't going to get there in time. It was like a Wednesday night and she was like, hey, you know, we don't have your daughter's transcripts. I'm like, what? 
I went in, went to her school, paid some stupid amount for that $3 transcript so that it can get in by the Sunday deadline. My daughter's um, copy that she ordered came in Tuesday or Wednesday. So we had this running joke in our family like, if it wasn't for your mama, you wouldn't even be an AKA. But now that joke is not funny. If it wasn't for your mama, you probably wouldn't have been an AKA. Just from that transcript. Again, I'm being honest with you. Okay, I hope this is blessing somebody. But now we have legacy in our family. My husband's Kappa. I'm an AKA. Now my oldest daughter is an AKA. I didn't stop there. I began thinking about our family collectively as legacy. Now my daughter is a young woman in her early 20s. I'm doing all this research about, you know, young marriage and just different things like that. And so I've always looked to see what male suitors will be a nice catch for my daughter, right? I'm a relationship coach. I'm going to be looking, right? And my quest went from men who may have followed God or really served in their church or really, you know, was good in Bible class and stuff like that, like how it was back home to now the environment that I was around, which was Greek life. So are they active in their organization? Are they leaders in their organization? Those are the things that now I was looking to in terms of who would be a good catch for my daughter. I developed this son-in-law crush on this young gentleman. I investigated him. I asked a young, you know, source at the time or whatever, like, what's up with him? What's he about or whatever? Got on my scoop. They began dating. They had formed their own chemistry. They got married. <laughs> okay. We had a first fam wedding. This was July 2022. Okay. Now we got legacy. Now we have this Greek family. All right. A month later, I had no idea that God was about to shake this up. I had no idea. Once my daughter got married, I was really already on this journey of really being at God's feet. I was kind of two years removed from the organization. I went from being active. And then when we moved here, I was just really focused on getting my doctor degree. Um, and so being absent from the from the organization allowed me to have more time to spend with God. Okay. And so I was really at God's feet. So once that wedding was over, it was a month where I was really in prayer and fasting for kind of direction in my life. You know, I was in crossroads where, with academia or um, entrepreneurship or, you know, just increase. Just, I was at God's feet. I was desperate. In August 2022, August 1st, God gave me what I asked for. Okay, this is significant. He gave me uh, 24 new clients, a special cohort. He, it has specific rules. Like there's ways that he wanted me to mentor them. I could not drink. He was like, you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit at all times. And the reason being was these women were heavy in their spiritual gifts. Okay, I mean heavy. These were women who were anointed, seer prophets, prophets, evangelists, like the whole shabam, just a whole new caliber of women than I than I ever coached before, right? So I needed to be on my game. So I formed this new community of women. I needed a community for myself. And the first thing that I thought of was to join a, a new chapter. I had attempted to join this new chapter blindly. It was a new chartered chapter, whatever. And it was going to be small. It was going to be nice and intimate. I sent my six, $700 in. I was like, hey, I want to be in, right? They got my check one day late to be a charter member. And they responded to me and said like, hey, did someone so was supposed to do this or whatever? The cattiness, right? But I was like, bump that. Like, what does this mean? They were like, you can be a regular member, but he won't be a charter member. I was like, nah. I don't want that. I might as well just be a regular member at a chapter that's closer to me. I think that was a God wink and a God save. <laughs> okay. Um, same month, I was invited to another event by a friend um, who was an AKA, but she's also a veteran in this city. And she was like, well, at least you can come and get to know some of the ladies. That same event happened on a Sunday, the Sunday where my husband was supposed to travel to go and bury his godfather. 
okay? And Holy Spirit told me, don't go to that event. You be here for your husband. Whatever he needs, he need help packing his clothes, you go. He, he just need prayer. He, you just need to see him and walk him out to his truck. That's what you do, right? Mind you, I would have never done that before. It would have been like, hey, I got this event at 10. What time you going to leave? Okay, Mwah. love you, praying for you, call me on the road. But again, Holy Spirit was prompting me to do something different. The following week, this is all August. There was an event that I was supposed to go to, a big event. We had a new install of a president and she's from Texas. And here we were having this event um, and I got tickets to go. And I was taking my middle daughter at the time. A friend of mine told me about it, who was also AKA. I knew she was going to be working the event, um, but I was going that day. I'm going to read to you something because this event was the catalyst for everything, okay? And I had the weirdest prayer that I could ever think of ever writing down. <laughs> it was just odd. I wasn't even thinking about AKA that, that heavy, but I'm just gonna read it to you verbatim. 821, 22 Sunday, 6.34 a.m. The scripture that I wrote down was Daniel 9, 16. In view of all of your faithful mercies, Lord, please turn your furious anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. All the neighboring nations mock Jerusalem and your people because of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. Here I go praying. Today is a planned luncheon for AKA and I felt compelled to pray for the sins of our sorority. Lord, you are merciful. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins we have allowed to be committed under the name of our sorority. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be positioned as a member of AKA, although the original intention was for status and to feel included. Now I feel as if you will have a higher purpose for me in the near future. For that, God, I go today with representing you boldly, meaning I'm going to this brunch, representing you boldly, I will talk to my middle daughter about the vision that I see for both her and the oldest and your younger siblings in the D9 community. Lord, I do ask that you show me what I'm doing wrong. What in the world? At six o'clock in the morning that I'm doing in this devotion time. Going back to this, preparing for this video, God reminded me like, you know, you prayed for the sins of your sorority that morning. I just had to read you the whole thing. And it reminded me of that, that incident, that blind beggar, Bartimaeus, I believe, Mark 11, verse 51 through 52, where he was passing Jesus in a crowd. And he was like, hey, hey, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And Jesus asked, well, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And he said, I want to see. And then Jesus was like, cool, your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see. And he followed Jesus down the road. I had a Bartimaeus moment. That morning, I asked, God, show me what I'm doing wrong. And he showed me at that brunch. Let me tell you what happened, okay? When I got there, me and my daughter was looking at a seat for a seat. It was a, a sea of AKAs, 500, 600 AKAs in this building. We could not find a seat. Everybody was saving seats. Nope, you can't see her. Nope, 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 right? We ended up all the way in the back at a table where it was only me and my daughter sitting out from among them, okay? Um, and here's what I started noticing that really freaked me out, okay? Mind you, I'm sober. Any other time I would have had a mimosa. I'm just being real with you. I'm drinking water going to the bathroom, I came back and it was about three to four women around my daughter, right? But I come up, they left. And I was like, babe, what's going on? She was like, oh, they just came over to ask me like if I wanted to, um, you know, sit further up front or if they wanted other people to come sit with me. But I told them I was good. You know, me and my mama went for my mom out there at the bathroom. I was like, okay. A seat up front would be nice. You know, I'm waiting for them to come back. Never came back. It happened again in the line where we were getting something to eat in the buffet lines. So I'll go to another line. I'll look over. People are mingling, talking to her. 
I get my plate, go to her. They all turn and start talking amongst themselves, right? And I'm thinking I'm about to come join the conversation, but they immediately like, Proof, turn other way. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, what's going on? She was like, oh yeah, everybody thinks I'm your sore, right? <laughs> like they keep saying sore. I'm not supposed to be your mom, you know, but it was just odd. Like, why they not talking to me? So long story short, this whole event, they were repelled by me, but gravitated to my daughter. Repelled by me, gravitated to my daughter. It was the weirdest thing, okay? We getting ready to leave early. I was like, something is, I'm just ready to go. And so at this moment, we're standing up and we're clapping for the president who's coming in. She's getting ready to take the stage and make her address, right? And I'm talk I ain't heard nothing sis was talking about because I'm in my head with my own thoughts. And what I'm thinking is this is never gonna happen to me and my daughter again. We are not gonna be sending up here at no back of no event. Um, I'm gonna join the chapter, I'm gonna head a committee, I'm gonna run for office, all these things that I knew to do in the Midwest, I'm gonna do it again in this new city. It seems like God just interrupted me, like, <clears throat> excuse me, are you done? I want to talk to you because I'm like, okay. And he says, let me ask you something. If what happens, if you never get the applause, would you still do this? Now I knew in my spirit, he was not talking about AKA when that applause, he was talking about coaching. And I responded to him. I was like, yeah, Lord, sure. I'll do this. I love this. I love what you've done with the program. Then he asked me a second question. If you were responsible to put help get the women who will take the stage and who will get the applause, would you still do this? And I said yes, but honestly, I was really sad about it. I was like, dang, okay, cool. So as I'm talking to myself about what I'm going to do with AKA, God comes in and starts talking to me about purpose and about calling. All right, put a pin in that. A couple of days later, I'm talking to one of the clients that God gave me. And as I mentioned, or if I haven't, these are heavy hitters. These are women who are highly gifted, highly prophetic, right? And I was talking to her, but I just, whatever reason, I had told her about a friend of mine who kept sending me these announcement videos. This girl from LA, right? I've known her since I was five years old, but she was always on kind of like some conspiracy theories. And I was telling her that she kept sending me these videos and she had just sent me another one and made me mad, right? And I mentioned that to my cohort member and she was like, Dr. M, God told me to send you a video two weeks ago and I was scared, but I'm not scared anymore. You just opened that door for me. I'm going to send you this video. You need to watch it and you're going to have to decide. I'm like, decide? She was like, you're going to have to decide and you're going to have to decide before this cohort is up. And I'm like... What? I'm like, all right, whatever. God knew that I would listen to her being a prophet versus listening to my friend. So I watched the videos, okay? Excuse me. One video, I was convicted about some things. I was like, okay, that resonates a little bit, but nothing to leave my org about, right? I watched the videos, one in particular that my friend has sent me. I watched that. They had some really good points. Okay. And I was like, this is interesting. And I said to myself, like, you know what? I need to get my handbook. These girls keep talking about this handbook. I need to find it, but I'm going to look for it another day. Right. Went to sleep that night. I would say for the next three nights, I was just waking up out of my sleep, having these heart palpitations, just waking up like heart, just pounding, can't hardly breathe. And I'm like, what is it? what's going on God like what's happening here I finally linked it to this slight conviction that I was having about the organization so I made a couple of phone calls one I called my mentor who was probably an aka for 40 plus years I know she's a woman of God so I asked her what's up and she said oh you know people been leaving um you know before the end of time that's that's not new but it's all about personal conviction, personal conviction. Okay. I was like, this is cool. This is great advice, but you ain't telling me nothing. 
what's up with these claims about the organization? Got off the phone with her. God put somebody on my heart to call. And it was this young woman, a young wife that was actually my research participant. Now, I remember her because she was an AKA and her her husband was a Kappa like us, right? And so I called her. I was like, okay, I know this is I, but this is Dr. M from the research study. But God told me to call you because I'm having slight convictions about this AKA. We talked and it was more so like, you know, talked about God and the resolve was like, oh, maybe we just supposed to be the one to come in and talk about our organization or just whatever. I was like, okay, cool. Saturday comes around. I was supposed to go to a chapter meeting. Did not go to that chapter, like another closer chapter meeting. In the shower, I looked around at my bathroom and it was dirty. I ain't even gonna lie. It was hair everywhere, clippers, all the cosmetics that I can possibly have out on the table. It was all, it was like, all right, you ain't going to no chapter meeting. You need to clean up this house. Second time that I picked my roles as a wife over Okay. Any other time, I would have gotten to it later. Not to say I'm nasty. Okay, don't try to judge me. But it was, I would have got to it later. I would have been like, no, I'm going to chapter and then I'm going to come back and do this. But God was positioning me differently is why I bring that up. Sunday rolls around, no big deal. Monday, I drop my daughter off at daycare. I get a text message from my young research participant. It wasn't even a text. It was a voice note. But as soon as I heard that ding and I saw that it was from her, I began to have those same heart propositions that I had that God was waking me up with. I knew in my heart that that girl was leaving AKA. Press play on the video, um, on the voice note. She was like, I'm out, Dr. M. I listened to the voice notes, but you need to read the handbook. Mind you, I already knew I needed to read the handbook, but I had been slacking. She said, read the handbook. I'm pressed to read it from start to finish. I think you should too. By this time, one of the videos had the link. I can't find it for you anymore, but um, it had the PDF. And I went through and I read it page by page by page. Let me tell you the two things that got me initially. First, there was four whole pages of hazing. We are an anti-hazing organization. It explained what hazing was physically, emotionally, um, all these different things. Some psychologist and lawyer did a really good job on these four pages. What pissed me off about that, excuse me, what made me upset about that is I know there's hazing in this organization, right? Even looking for schools for my school my daughter, AKAs ain't on the yard here. Ain't no AKAs on the yard there. I know they get suspended. I've sat on committees investigating these things. And it always made me so angry that how come we are upper epsilon of women or echelon of women who doctors, lawyers, PhDs, senators, all these different people, school board members, and we can't protect these young girls from being hazed? Why are we still having this conversation? So that was the first thing that bothered me the most is that how detailed they were about this. Then flip to the next 20 pages and you got all this muddiness of scripture, a little scripture here, a whole lot of Alpha Kappa Alpha here, little scripture there. But what took me out was looking at our him or our pledge or whatever to thee O alpha kappa alpha we pledge our hearts our minds our strength to foster their teachings obey thy laws and make thee supreme in service to all man mankind O alpha kappa alpha we greet we greet three when i read that i was like we say this all the time but this is in my bible this is Deuteronomy 6, 4, 9. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. This is Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord with love. You should love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is Mark 12, 30. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Why does it say Alpha Kappa Alpha in here? How come you guys just couldn't put the scripture it was stuff like that that bothered me the most, okay? I even went back and re-listened to the first video that my client sent me 
did a little research on her, that girl wasn't even an AKA, she was an SG row. And I'm like, oh, heck no. So this ain't just AKA. And that's when I ran to my husband and I told him, I was like, babe, we need to list, look into our organizations. This is not right, okay? It is ain't right. We went through three weeks together. Whole, the whole month of September, it was me and my husband. We were looking at videos. We were looking at sermons. We were looking at the scriptures. We looking at white papers, um, you know, articles that people had wrote. Like we hadn't studied something together or anything re related to the Bible or any matter like that in a long time. We had so much fun. There was a lot of chatter <laughs> about what are we about to do? And finally, I asked God a real transparent question. This was kind of towards the end of our research. God started to give some revelation at this time. Um, and I asked him a very real question. I went in and I asked God, I said, God, I understand that there's part of this organization that's not of you. But can I stay to bring you in? Can I stay to make changes to these this hazen and make changes to our rituals so that they can better align with you? Something along those lines. I just asked him a direct question like, look, can I stay and can I make changes? God was like, no, I did not ordain you to make changes in AKA. Your anointing is for this relationships and marriage. Your anointing is not for AKA. And if you do it, you're going to be spending your wheels and you will not, my hand will not be on you. Quick, fast answer. I was like, you know what? I ain't got to know. I ain't got to do any more investigation. I left, typed in my letter, figured out what I needed to do, mailed it off. I thought my husband was gonna follow suit and he did not immediately. Now he did have big revelations. He shared more, opened up more about his process. You know, he had never talked about that before, but his biggest revelation that gave me peace was like, I'm no longer condoning this for my son. Like that's a wrap, this is a legacy, right? And other things came up for him, but he needed time. He was like, I don't feel compelled to leave and I'm not going to leave just because you, you want me to or just because you're leaving. Okay. And but what we agreed upon was that he will continue to do his own investigation and continue to do his research. I wasn't happy with that at first. I'm just being honest with you. But one thing that God kept saying as I was praying about it behind his back was wait on him wait on him is what God told me and pray all right so after I left I want to tell you what happened after I left okay um so just kind of hear me out God started revealing so many things to me when I once I sent off my letter one there was a need of acceptance that drove the desire for L aka so that kind of led to some healing of some a healing journey, right? He re-emphasized to me that you did not ask to join this organization, okay? He also brought me to Galatians 5, 19 through 20. He set me up because I always bring this up when it comes down to Christian dating. But he brought it to me in terms of my error. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, Sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I've said before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Other things he revealed to me, it became a part of my identity. Stop saying that it's, it wasn't, it was, aka became my idol. This is how he's shown me the implications of idolatry or making this organization an idol and how it impacted my marriage and my family. So he dealt with me first and then he said, this is how it's impacting your marriage and family. 
okay? Idolatry. I always say this in terms of, um, you know, sin of choice, right? When anybody comes into these organizations and you make these oaths and these covenants or just whatever, what I'm learning about covenants is, you know, you make these altars, you're summoning these spirits, right? And this is, you have to look this up on your own, but this is my understanding of it. And when we make these covenants other than God, we allow legal access to, for an open door for demonic activity, for demonic influence in your life, right? This is very similar to sin. When we sin, we are separated from God and we, we give the enemy a foot a footstool, a foothold for demonic activity. But this is like having an open door. This is the way God showed me, okay? And I'm just kind of sharing it with you. He also led me to um, Judges 2, 1 through 3. And, and maybe this will give you a visual. The angel of the Lord went from Gilgal to Bokan and said to the Israelites, I brought you out of Egypt into this land that I swore to give your ancestors. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, though, you were not to make any covenants with people living in this land. Instead, you were to destroy their altars, but you disobeyed my command. Why did you do this? So now I declare that I will no longer drive out the people living in your land, and they will be thorns in your sides, and their gods will be constant temptation to you. What? Who is a constant temptation to me? <laughs> what's happening right and I always will say in my coaching practice that the enemy has no new tricks and when it comes down to preventing marriage because the enemy comes to still kill and destroy so he's trying to prevent you from covenant marriage from kingdom marriage and his sin of choice is gonna be sexual immorality if I were to use that same analogy here with these Greek Greek organizations the sin of choice for you to open that door to demonic influence is idolatry. And D9 organizations breeds idolatry from the start to the rituals, to the hymns, to the pledges. It's beyond the in initiation process. You got to repeat these things over and over and over again. What we wear, what we spend our money on, what we spend our time doing. Okay? All the things. Here's a couple of definitions of idolatry I want to read to you that I've collected over the years. The worship of someone or something other than God as though it were God. Anything that takes the place in our lives that should only belong to God is idolatry. Any person or thing that consumes your thoughts, your words, your time, your energy, or your money other than God is an idol. That's a life application Bible commentary. Anything you love more than your obedience to God, any or anyone or anything you are not willing to let go of for the sake of wholeheartedly serving God and placing him as Lord over your life, you've made that person or thing or organization an idol. That's Dr. Emily McKnight right there. The Holy Spirit gave me that. Okay. What I'm learning is idolatry does not only have personal in implications, but as you can see here, it can have implications on our family, our real legacy, our entire household, okay? The people that we love the most, our spouses and our children, okay? We bound ourselves to a covenant that is not of God, where we're serving and worshiping these organizations that breeds this idolatry, right? And serving other gods and putting that membership before our obedience to God, but then we perpetuate the sin of idolatry under the guise of legacy. Let me show you how this showed up in my life. In terms of my marriage with Devin, right? When we dated back in college, that breakup was because he couldn't resist temptation under Kappa after he pledged Kappa, right? One, again, still kill, destroy, demonic influence. He tried to destroy us, right? Two, there wasn't a draw to join the organization until I got closer and got back with him and marrying him, right? I was good. Once I became an AKA, 
there were certain things, and this is just in my, our marriage, okay? I ain't even got to the kids. There were certain things that came into our marriage that I wonder if they were linked to the covenant that I made. And now that these demonic doors are open, financial infidelity, and let me make that clear. Spending money without my husband knowing and without him, especially large amounts of money, is like cheating on him. Okay, so that's why I use that term financial infidelity. It ain't cute, not to the man that I'm married to. And I did that to him. And what it dawned on me was the funds, the student loan that I took out behind his back for thousands of dollars was to buy my daughter paraphernalia when she crossed AKA. What? It also dawned on me when I finally got rid of all my paraphernalia. One, it felt like I was getting rid of dead person people's clothes. I'm just going to tell you that. That was real spiritual. But as I was getting all the paraphernalia together to go out and burn, I had three big totes of, of, of paraphernalia. I had a whole pink and green side of my closet with the stuff all at the top, the purses, the bags, all the things, the boxes. That's where the finances is going, <laughs> right? Excessive spending, not going back to our household, but going to worship, to idolize, to be proud with this organization. Another thing, sexual behaviors that I found freedom from in my singleness came back like a flood. And this is um, specifically self-pleasure and illicit content. I told you I was going to be honest with you, okay? And I wonder if this had anything to do with it. Financial infidelity, sexual immorality within marriage, right? Hiding, you know, these secret sins, all of these things lead to divorce. Ask people, look it up, okay? And I'm wondering if that was sin that was coming in and just this influence, right? Um, lastly, what he showed me with my marriage is that we've had years of financial difficulty, right? We just couldn't catch a break. We went out on a limb, followed God, quit the job, went back to school, but it just seems like we were on this hamster wheel. And after all these years being an entrepreneur, things have not been on the up and up until after I left the organization. Anyway, let me get to the kids. <laughs> My oldest, here's what God revealed to me. What did you see? This is the question he posed. What did you see in your children? Or what did you see in your child after she became an AKA? And I noticed something very similar to when Devin became a Kappa Alpha Psi, like his defenses were down. That's the only way I can explain it. Um, she was more prone to make decisions that was kind of contrary to what we knew that God wanted for her life and her defenses were down. Like she was so gung-ho for God and obedient and that zeal and those defenses were down. Um, she has her own testimony. I'm going to let her share that. But that's what I noticed about my daughter. The, uh, the other children, my three other children was more so of what I was perpetuating onto them. That middle girl in there, she wasn't messed up about no organization, but in my mind, she was going to pledge undergraduate and she was going to be an AKA and I had several years to work on her and it probably would take me several years to do it because she's so headstrong. Let me tell you what God revealed to me about wanting my daughter or sons to pledge undergrad for the experience. We are very particular about our children um we are big on character um we kind of I'm, I'm very proud of them we don't get calls from the schools and stuff like that or whatever um and so we're really big on character and reserving you know their character if that makes sense and we're also very protective over our our kids right and what God revealed to me was for this experience of undergrad, you are willing to let your children, your prized possession, go through at least three weeks, 21 days of potential abuse at the hands of 18 to 19 year olds. Either physical or emotional, learning under extreme circumstances, lack of sleep, 
getting talked to, however, that, you know, doing stuff for people, basically bullying for the sake of joining an organization in undergrad. And when do we do that? Who does that? When do we do that for these organizations we do? And I was right there. I was right there. I would think like, okay, she's a little spicy. Is she going to make it through undergrad? Because <laughs> somebody going to say something to her? And you, not the fact that somebody's going to say to her something crazy. It was more so, is she going to be able to make line because of the character that we already built in her to stand up for herself and speak her mind? Delusional. Let me get to the what God revealed to me about my son, okay? My son twirled a cane before he held a Bible. He, We have photos of him throwing up the yo. He with his friends doing a little shimmy. Mind you, I was big on um, promoting abstinence with my children. We talk about our journey and I really have been um, specific about my son, right? What God showed me was like, Emily, you have a desire for your, your son to be the virgin Kappa in his organization. I'm like, you, you're right, Lord. <laughs> that is what I wanted for, me, for him. But to what extent, right? So you preserved him this whole time and talked to him about purity. But just so he can be like a Kappa, like his dad, you're going to insert him to a highly sexualized environment with sex, parties, alcohol, all the things, women, and say, reserve your purity just so you can, so this could be a legacy? Crazy town. All right, my baby girl, I only got one more kid left. Bear with me. Things that he was showing to me, yes, I was pregnant with my daughter. So that was like an automatic, like I'm pregnant with you when I came at AKA. So it's legacy all day. Okay, I sung hymns and instead of lullabies because I was going through that pledging process. So what God brought back to me was at her sister's initiation, everybody thought it was so cute. But we're sitting around singing the hymn and here goes my baby, not even one years old, sings our hymn in perfect harmony. That's alarming to me now. Even from the future, AKA onesies, even with my son, I remember Devin singing hymns to him. And I was like, oh, I know that's a capuchin because I ain't never heard that song. <laughs> okay. Um, just the things that we do, pink and green, crimson and cream, right? Like we act as if we're not perpetuating this and we are from birth. Let me tell you how it was explained to, um, displayed to me. When I left AKA, I, me and my daughter, we were just, you know, making a snack. And I told her the day that I sent my letter off, I came home and I told her and I said, mommy's not going to be an AKA anymore. Mommy's not going to be an AKA. She's four. She responds to me and say, you don't want to be Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority anymore. The only thing that girl left off was incorporated. The girl had the full name. And what God revealed to me at that moment was, what if you would have told her, mommy's not going to be a Christian anymore? Would she have even known what you were talking about? No, she wouldn't have. She would not have. Okay. So it's just all these, this revelation in, in short, right? Um, now that God has told me to come out about this, I had to break something generationally. I was doing something within my family, knowingly and unknowingly, that did not please God. And my first step was to renounce the organization. And that was after I heard God clearly where he said his hand was not going to be on me if I stayed. You ain't got to say nothing else. But I asked him. I diligently did work and asked him. I repented of my sins over and over. I had to release myself from mom guilt. God, again, started reveal to me things about the organization. I thought this was just more reinforcement for me. But when people started 
sending me more denouncement videos September of this year, 2023. I'm like, why are pe people sending me denouncement videos talking about God placed this on my heart for you to, for you, Dr. M. I'm like, why? I said, Lord, why? And he said, because you haven't gone public. You haven't gone public. So that revelation was not for me that this testimony is for you. And I want you, I have very specific calls to actions that I want you to do, okay? Because I went through other steps. I went through deliverance. I began to intercede for my loved ones, right? This has been a year-long journey. Um, I am glad to report that my husband left Kappa Alpha Psi in May 2023. My oldest daughter left Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated November 2023. Prayer works. Do you hear me? And do not let up. I not only share this testimony with my family, but I shared with my clients who are within the D9 organization. Why was it important for me to share it to my clients? I do. And this is just one little coaching spiel. I believe that God is opening doors for kingdom marriage. I believe that he is about to play matchmaker. All that buzz that you hear about kingdom marriages that are going to be on the rise. I believe that he has shown that to me. But it is only for those who love him and obey his commandments. You must love him and obey his commandments. And I will tell anybody this right now. If you are, I'm AKA till I die, I'm Delta till I die, I'm Zeta till I die. God is not Lord. God is not Lord. He is looking to bless those who love and obey him. Same on the flip side with the men. Or when I don't care who you dating, right? If you hear those words, I now say red flag down. That is equivalent to you dating a guy and you're trying to abstain. And he said, oh, I ain't, I ain't never abstaining. I got to have some sex. Red flag down. If you saying that I will never give this up for the sake of God or our relationship, red flag down. All right. So I've been sharing it with my clients now I'm sharing this with you. These revelations that God gave me about legacy, they are for you. Okay? And I want to invoke hope. As I wrap this up, I just want you to let you know that there is hope. Since I left my organization, not only has my husband left, but my daughter left. My marriage is better. I feel lighter. It feels like new levels of deliverance since we both left right? My husband is learning more about God, like he, like 10.0 when we first got together. And I love it. And I enjoy him being at a God's feet and just learning more about him. It is beautiful. It is sexy. I love it. Okay. And most of all, we are closer as a unit, but we are closer to God. We are serving God with all of our heart and all of our mind. Okay. My oldest, I'm just so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. She is going after the things of God again. Okay, she is following her convictions again. And that's the baby I raised. Okay, I've seen changes in my teenager too. She's had a great first year, no stress, no college. She's always been headstrong, but she's not phased about a D9 organization. And I love that about her. And I have to apologize and forgive myself for trying to change that. God gave her that. My son is learning about God and the things of God and memorizing scripture. That's what he's learning. Not no strolls, not no twirl and no cane, okay? And last but not least, my little one, we talk about God daily. She knows more about God than she knows about Alpha Kappa Alpha. And, we, and she worships God through song. We have worshiped every single mo morning and she sings to our Lord and Savior now in perfect melody. And I know because of the efforts, because of what I did, I know for sure God is pleased. Okay? My job, my goal has been the repair of the breach. I made an error and I'm reversing that thing and I'm doing it for my 
family. I'm doing it for my husband and I'm doing it for my children. So what are your next steps? Your next steps are to fast and pray. You need to fast and you need to pray and you need to diligently seek the answers to your questions, especially if you are a current member of any of these denied organizations. I encourage you to pull out your handbooks, your hymns, your rituals and line them up with your Bible. If you are married to a spouse, do it for them, right? Get the, gather the information. <laughs> Y'all do it together and figure out what you guys are involved in. Do the work, okay? Sometimes I share this with people and I can't even get the sentence out. I denounce AKA and they were like, well, God ain't told me to leave. When would he have told you? We just talking. When you ask him, you know, do the work. Take the time, the same amount of time that you spent getting into these organizations. You use that same amount of time to pray and fast about these organizations, okay? In closing, I just want to pray a few scriptures over your life, if you would allow me. One, I pray that you make God Lord over your life your marriage and your children, whether future or present. Deuteronomy 6, 5, 7 says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. That's the mandate, okay? I pray that those who have made the mistake of joining these organizations, Lord God, I pray that you have mercy on them like you have shown mercy on me. Let them cry out to you to have mercy and show that same mercy to them. Isaiah 59, 20 says, the Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins, says the Lord. And this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit will not leave them and neither will these words I have given you. They will be your, on your lips and the lips of your children and your children's children forever. God is redeeming families. He's redeeming legacy for us as men and women, husbands and wives, and our children to serve God and God alone. And lastly, I pray that all of us declare and decree, Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you for sitting and listening through this testimony. I pray that it has blessed you. If you think of anyone um, as you're listening to this, forward it to them. Don't delay. You never know when you are contributing to someone's freedom. And lastly, I am here for you. We are here for you. Me and my husband are here for you. You will have my contact information. I will put it in the description box. Reach out if you need prayer, if you need assistance, if you need guidance, whatever it is. This testimony, this journey what I prayed back then that God was going to use me in a, in a bigger way. I didn't know it was going to be like this, but it was for you. <laughs> so we are here for you. I love you. And it's going to be okay. Cause God's got us. All we have to do is make him Lord over our life, over everything. And he will redeem us. He will redeem us and he will redeem our families. Amen. Amen.